pre, mid, or post tribulation rapture. Okay, um, if you're familiar with my YouTube ministry I had for many years, I and you've seen my videos on the pre tribulation rapture, more properly called the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble, then I think that you'd be, you know, pretty thoroughly convinced that uh, that is the scriptural way. But I realize a lot of people are coming into the ministry now, they haven't heard and seen things and whatever else um, that I've done in the past. So you haven't gone through the many hours of video that I have out there on this issue. So I'm just going to do a basic um, study on it today. Which one is the correct position? Does the church go up before the time of Jacob's trouble, in the middle of it, or at the end of it? And to add a little bit more weight to my arguments today, I thought I would actually invite, of all people, you might not believe that I have such connections, but I do, I'm going to invite the Pope here today. And uh, the Pope is actually going to be joining me in studio. He's here waiting. And um, so without further ado, um, Pope, could you please come and uh, join us here on camera? Here he is. We have uh, the newest Pope here, Pope Oliver the First. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little joke here, but uh, my son, Oliver. Um, but we're going to go over some things here, okay? So, let's start out by going to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7 in the King James Bible. This whole argument can be destroyed within a matter of seconds after you read the scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And if you read verses 1 down through verse 9, we're not going to for sake of time, but if you read those verses, it's clearly talking about a future uh, time period that has not happened yet. All right, very important to understand that. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, this false title of it's the great tribulations that's coming, the tribulation that's coming. There's no such dis title in the entire King James Bible. That whole thing is a lie, right? There is no the tribulation, the great tribulation. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And who is Jacob? Do you know? Israel. Israel. That's right. Jacob is Israel. Jacob is not the church. <laughs> It's so easy. I mean, you can literally, that's the only argument that you really need right there. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Are you Jacob? No, you're the church if you're saved. The church of the living God. <laughs> Argument's over. Well, do you think the church goes through the time of Jacob's trouble? Hmm. No. Why? It's about the Jews. Daniel chapter 9. Not that hard to figure out. Turn to Daniel chapter 9. Verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Um, 70 weeks are determined upon who? Thy people and thy holy city? And upon thy holy city? Um... I don't remember the body of Christ having a holy city, unless it's, of course, the Pope here. Uh, you have a holy city, don't you, here? What's your holy city, do you know? Uh. The Vatican. <clears throat> <laughs> What's your holy city? The Vatican. The Vatican. Yes, oh, the Vatican. Yeah, the fat, the fat again. I'm sorry, I'm not... Pope, I'm just oh, sure, you're the you're the newest Pope. No, you're Pope I'm Oliver the, the First. You know, can you imagine a Pope with the first name of Oliver? Wouldn't that be great? After Oliver Cromwell, that'd be wonderful. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, Christians, yeah, Christians don't have a holy city in terms of physically on the earth. Uh, the nation of Israel has a holy city. So the seventieth week of Daniel that we're reading here in Daniel nine twenty four is a reference to. The nation of Israel. Okay, again, it's Jacob. That's who it is. Argument's over. There's no more argument. Um, the church cannot go through any part of it. 
Uh, we don't need further purification and, or anything else. But let's start out with that uh, argument there, the thing of, does the church need to be purified more? Um, your Most Holiness here, uh, could you please get the catechism? Oh, thank you. Such an honor to get the catechism from the Pope here. <clears throat> Page 193, number 675 in the catechism, the official catechism of the Catholic Church here. Um, Before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. This per the persecution will, that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-Messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. Um, the Catholic Church has always taught that they need to have final purification. Okay? And that they will see the Antichrist. <laughs> That's what they teach. So you want to go with uh, the post-trib system or whatever, the, that goes the whole way through the end? It's Catholicism. Now, they don't teach that, the, that they get called up or anything to be with the Lord. It's just, you know, they kind of just stay on the earth because... Why bother going to heaven when you're a Catholic? <laughs> uh, you, you know, your heaven is, you know, you rule on the earth and whatever else. I mean, they, I guess they teach that they go to heaven, you know, they do technically, but the point is, the catching up and whatever else, well, why? The church just needs to be purified more. That's what they teach. So, I'll uh, give this to you, and if you'd like, you can throw it on the floor over there. Go ahead. Your, your holiness. Oh, how could you have done such a thing? Did you enjoy that? Oh, boy. He's always wanted to throw a book on video, so what better book than the Catechism? Okay, um, now, so the post-trib thing, and we'll get into it here in, in, as we go through this. I've dealt with posties over the years, that you go through the whole seven years, and the catching up is at the end. You call it the divine U-turn. Um, you go up, and then you come right back down at the Battle of Armageddon. <laughs> so... The church goes up, they're there in Revelation 19, and then they come right back down again. Um, very interesting because it eliminates something which we'll talk about here, another proof against the mid and post position. We'll get back to that. But uh, so post, the whole post-trib <laughs> rapture thing is nonsense. Uh, you can't believe in that if you're a Bible-believing Christian. It's just that simple. All right, um, I'll show you another one here that's really stupid. Get the purple one there. I did a whole video refuting this. It's on YouTube yet. Uh, thank you, Pope Oliver. Um, this one is called Rapture, Prophecy, or Heresy by H. Speed Wilson, Colonel, U.S. Marine Corps, retired. Um, yeah. Right here's the book. And there he is. He's dead, probably in hell by now. Or not by now, but he's probably in hell. And it says here, Speed is offering a $10,000 reward to anyone who can, after reading this book, uh, refer to several scriptures clear, clearly stating that the saints um, are taken out of this world. Details on how to re receive this reward are presented in the book. And I literally, you know, proved it in my study, but he's dead, so there's no way to get the $10,000 reward. So kind of a bummer there. Uh, so another one... Uh, your Holiness, would you like to also dispose of this one? There you go. Good one. All right. Now, what about the, the mid-trib? They've kind of worked that, that name a little bit here, but give me the white one, please. Um, these cuckoo birds that have come out and they say, well, I believe that the church will go through half of the time of the church's trouble. Oh, I know, the Jacob's trouble. That's what it was, yeah. Um, they'll go through half of it. Well, then that would be mid-trib. Well, mid-trib doesn't sound so good, so we'll say pre-wrath, rapture. See, you can get a little fancy here. The pre post-trib pre-wrath is what they say. And they, they change the meaning of it. The tribulation is only the first three and a half years, and, that's, and then the wrath comes in the last three and a half years, and the wrath isn't there in the beginning. And you know, Lord, the Lord unleashing the Antichrist on the earth and, you know, war and, and everything else and famine. Oh, that's not really wrath. That's just, you know, 
the, the devil does that stuff. The Lord's just opening the seals to see what the devil's doing. That's literally what the position teaches. But this one here we have, if you want to get the other one a while, um, the other one that's on the chair there. We have the pre-wrath rapture of the church by Marvin Rosenthal. All right. I'm going to read some things from this. And then you have this one here, which is uh, the post-trib pre-wrath rapture by Roland Rasmussen. Here are the two books right here. Okay. Now I have this, I have these materials, all right? So don't say to me, uh, well, you don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking about and whatever else. Uh, yes, I do. I do know what I'm talking about, but, um, let me read a quote from the pre-wrath rapture. The pre-wrath rapture, why this view now? Right there it is. He says, perhaps at this point an important question must be answered. If the thesis of this book is correct, if the church is to be raptured pre-wrath at the opening of the seventh seal and therefore sometime within the second half of the 70th week of Daniel, why has this position never, never been enunciated before? It's funny because these people, they'll say, oh, the pre-trib pre rapture only came out in 1830. Uh, well, this guy here, one of the two biggest names on this mid-trib thing, um, essentially is what it is. He's saying it's never been enunciated before, before his book came out. And he's right. Continuing. Why only after more than 1,900 years into the church age does this view appear on the scene? Is it simply a new and fanciful position set forth by an extremist? This is a legitimate issue deserving a satisfactory response. Hmm, brand new position. Here he's saying in this, Within two years many men will be teaching the pre-wrath rapture. Within five years it will be a recognized position. And if God pleases, within 15 years, it will become a major position of the believing church if God gives that many years. <laughs> Guy's clueless about a lot of things. But uh, you see, when was this uh, book written? Let me show you the copyright page. 1990. Right there. And you're concerned about 1830 with the uh, quote-unquote pre-trib rapture, which isn't even true. It's a lie. Um, but they're concerned about that and their position, these radical people, 1990, it came out. Okay. <laughs> no, this is the new belief right here. And by the way, you say within 15 years, it'll be an accepted, you know, people teaching it, whatever else. Well, 15 years, that'd be what, 2005. Hmm. And here we are in 2021. And many people are going with this position right here, the newest of the positions that there is. I mean, we just demonstrated earlier that the Catholic Church has been teaching basically a, that the church goes through the whole thing. Now you have a new position coming out saying that they go through half of it, you know, essentially. 1990, you say, what about the Roland Rasmussen book? Roland Rasmussen, here you go, your holiness. Um, <clears throat> Such a good pope, you know. Uh, but uh, this one, the Roland Rasmussen book, look at the copyright date. 1996. So this one came out six years after this one. Huh. Um, but this is the real church, the position that the church has always held and whatever. Uh, if you want to go back to 1990, that's a problem. Hmm. But I'll give you some reasons why this system breaks down as well. Here you go. You may uh, deposit it. Mean. Sure. Yes. Very good. And that one too. Oh, and by the way, this is the one that uh, Stephen Anderson, Kent Hoven, um, a whole bunch of different people are connected to this cult leader, this Roland Rasmussen guy. Let me just show you real quick here. That guy right there. Oh, I'll do it this way so you can see his face running a call out in California. I don't know as he's still, I think he's dead now or something. Uh, thankfully he's not messing people up anymore. You may deposit it. This is what I think of it. It's terrible. Okay. Now, why don't 
the mid-trib and the post-trib systems work. And I'll just say trib. Tribulation is never given as a title. You go through all the references, it's always a description of what is going on currently, what's gone in a, on in the past, and what will go on in the future. <laughs> it's just trouble. It's tribulations and troubles. Trials and things like that, the trial of your faith. That's all it means. There is no great tribulation, the great tribulation. Uh, that's not a title in scripture. And the tribulation, it's the tribulation of those days in Matthew chapter 24. Never a title. See, that's how the, the slick con man will get you like that. But let's stick with their term. The mid-trib, the post-trib. The mid-time of Jacob's trouble, the post-time of Jacob's trouble. Why don't those systems work? Well, there's another reason why. If you want to go in your Bible to Romans chapter 14, I'll show you another good one here. Another way to destroy this thing very simply, very easily. Romans chapter 14 um, and verse 9. For to this end, or, I'm sorry, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Huh. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Where does the judgment seat of Christ fit in if you go through half of the time of Jacob's trouble? Or the whole time of Jacob's trouble? Oops. <laughs> it's not there. And if you look at uh, some of these guys, their charts and whatever else, they don't even have the judgment seat of Christ. Hmm. Let me show you the problem with that. Let's see, there's another. Uh, let's see here, real quick. Okay, I'm not going to bother reading the other one. Um, other reference to the judgment seat of Christ, but I'll show you the other problem with this whole thing of uh, them omitting the judgment seat of Christ. All right, um, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Did John go up before the time of Jacob's trouble? Yes. <laughs> Um, so they, these posties and middies, whatever you want to call them, they'll come out and they'll say, there's not one reference to anybody going up before the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, we just read one. They say, well, no, it was in the spirit. <laughs> so, it's, you know, uh, John had an out-of-body experience there or something. You know, his body's there on the ground and his spirit just went up or something. Uh, no, that's not what it's teaching there. Paul often talked about, I'm coming in the spirit and whatever. You know... <sighs> It, he physically went up there, but look at what he sees. Verse three, and he that was and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders, slit, sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Hmm, the crowns that you get at the judgment seat of Christ. So wait a second. Before the Antichrist is unleashed in Revelation chapter 6, the 24 elders are there sitting on thrones and they have crowns on their heads. And the posties will say, well, it's just the souls that are there. It doesn't say the souls. And John sees the souls of them that are slain in Revelation chapter 6 and he calls them souls. He doesn't say the 24 elder, elders are souls. Anybody tells you that, they're adding to the scriptures. Is your, is your hat getting itchy? If you want to take it off, you can. There you go. So, we'll just put your Pope hat over there. <laughs> you can be back to being just Oliver again. Um, but, and my point is, both the mid and the post system eliminate the judgment, judgment seat of Christ. But how can you? The judgment seat of Christ had to have happened before John was caught up. And certainly before Revelation chapter 6. You go down to Revelation chapter 5, and it says here, verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 
And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. In the resurrection they neither marry nor are uh, given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. What you're seeing there, you see the 24 elders in verse 9, you see the rest of the body of Christ in verse 11, the redeemed saints in verse 11. <laughs> Very clear, and I've done the, all the studies, I've gone through all, you know, all these scriptures in great detail, and I'm just hitting the, the high points of this whole thing. Okay, go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You want a uh, study that totally destroys this whole posty thing, um, and mid, midi and posty, this would be the one for you. It's good, isn't it? Um, okay, verse 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Then you go into verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Again, I've done detailed studies on this. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. The body of Christ must be taken out of the way. It's not the Holy Spirit in you know per se, it's the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit indwelling the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is he who now letteth. But until he be taken out of the way is the body of Christ. Again, I've proved this in many studies. And you can just compare Scripture with Scripture. The body of Christ is in Revelation chapter 5. The Antichrist shows up in Revelation chapter 6. That part is chronological. There's no question about it. Revelation 4, John is in isolation on the island of Patmos. Gets called up to be with the Lord. It all lines up. He sees the 24 elders. They have crowns on their head. Judgment seat of Christ has already happened. And then he sees the angels round about the throne, and then the Antichrist is revealed. It lines up perfectly. So, uh, the systems of pre, mid, post, there's only one that you can believe if you believe the King James Bible, if you are truly, genuinely saved, and that is that the body of Christ goes up before the time of Jacob's trouble. And all the little arguing back and forth and whatever else is pointless. Um, you have to deny some clear teachings of Scripture to be anything but believing in a pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching up of the body of Christ. And we go through so many Scriptures on this issue. But just wanted to put something out there quickly just to kind of clear up some of the confusion on this whole thing. So, uh, that will be it for this video. Um, We'd like to. Uh, I gotta put this back on quick. We'd like to thank the Pope um, for coming and being with us today, and thank you for your help with the books and everything else. And uh, do you have anything else to say in closing? This is what I think of this. This is what you think of this. You must be a pre-Vatican II Pope. You're, you're not really ecumenical, are you? Uh, yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's kind of a little bit of a radical Pope. I think he's he's kind of the trad cat Pope, you know. So. This catechism, this is what I think of the catechism. <gasps> your eminence. How could you do such a thing? That was really good. You'll have to do it some other time. But, uh, <laughs> and now, just stay up. <laughs> You've taken enough there. So uh, that's going to be it. And uh, certainly please go over to YouTube and check out my videos on the pre-Time Jacob's Trouble Catching Up. I've done so much research on that. I mean, of all the things that King James Video Ministries has come out with over the years, Defense of the King James Bible, Dispensational Teaching, you know, you know get down through all the list of things I've preached on. The, the timing of the catching up of the body of Christ has been the biggest thing that I've ever preached on. And I get really irritated when I have people and they say, oh, I'm 
strong believer in your ministry, but I'm going more leaning more mid and post and whatever else. Um, it's a major issue. It's a very major issue. Okay. Um, you need to spend some time in the word of God and you'll be convinced and encouraged and blessed when you realize that the body of Christ is not going into this time of Jacob's trouble. The Daniel 70th week thing is not for the holy people in terms of the body of Christ. It's for the chosen seed of Israel, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what it's about. They're the ones that need to be purified. They're the ones that need to have their eyes open. That's why the Bible will be revealed, the revelation of Jesus Christ to who? Do you need him revealed to you? No. The church of, or the uh, nation of Israel, they need to have Jesus Christ revealed to them. That's what the whole thing is about. All right? Argument over.